What up, party people? Matt Lehman, the owner of Finders Thrift and Vinyl in La Quinta, California, and Spatula City Records. What a better way to say I love you than with a gift from Spatula City Records. So today, this is part two of what to use to clean records and what to not to use to clean records. This is more of a what not to use to clean records. This is wood glue. Um, this is the wood glue I have. You can use whatever wood glue you want. Basically what happens is you take your dirty record and you rub wood glue all over it. You let it sit there, you let it dry for however long it takes to dry, and then you peel it all off and ta-da, all of the grit, gr all of the dirt and crap and grime that's in the grooves comes out. And it does work, but it doesn't work well. It's time consuming, it usually doesn't come off clean. Um, and here's why it works. Records are made out of vinyl, which is short for polyvinyl chloride, which is long for PVC, which is also used for plumbing. It's basically plastic. It's used everywhere. PVC repels water. So if you drip water on a record, it will bead up. It won't actually go in the grooves. And that's why when you clean records, you have to use some sort of uh, surficant or some sort of detergent to actually break the surface of the record. Same thing is true with wood glue, is wood glue cannot adhere to it, so when it dries, it just peels off cleanly. Cleanly, in quote marks, air quotes, because it doesn't always come off cleanly, and I'm pretty sure you're going to see it on this one. Now, one of the things I think that through this entire series, one of the most important things that I'm going to harp on over and over again is that most of these processes, or processes, processes, are going to be okay they're all probably going to work to some degree but what's the most important to me is how you clean your records before you clean them and i know that sounds stupid but this is this is an important sound if you buy records from garage sales or uh thrift stores or even record stores and, and you go in where records have been uh ignored for years and years and years in basements and, and are filthy and dirty and if you take out a record and you hear this sound Or this one, not that, that's a car. I'm pretty sure you could hear that. Um, it's not, if you pull a record out of a sleeve, it should be silent, you shouldn't hear anything. What you're hearing when I do this, I don't really care about this record, so I'm gonna keep doing it. That's sleeve scuffs. So if you look at this record, I don't know if you can see it, it's filthy, all right? And it's not just dust, it's dirt and grime because we live in the desert and there's a lot of sand here. What's happening is when I'm pulling it out of that sleeve, that sand and dirt and dust is rubbing against the inner sleeve or the jacket and that's basically sandpaper. So you're taking that piece of sand or dirt and rubbing it across the grooves. That's horrible. So imagine if you start cleaning a record, same thing with I do with Windex. If I start doing that with my scrub brush and my Windex, I'm doing the exact same thing. I'm taking that sand and that dirt and scrubbing it really hard and beating up the grooves. That's what's causing damage, not, wind, not the Windex, not the scrub brush. It's the sand and filth, and filth and dirt. So you need to find a way to clean your records before you actually go into the grooves and try to clean them up better. There are several different ways we'll get to that. I have, I have a couple different things. Basically, you just need to be careful, rinse them off in a sink um, beforehand. You really don't want to wipe them, because same thing, even if you wipe them with the towel, if I do this, I'm still taking that sand and dirt and grit and rubbing it around the record, and that's causing sleeve scuffs. Slight sleeve scuffs or soft sleeve scuffs won't cause any damage, usually to the sound of a record, unless it's like uh, something, a lot of silence, maybe some jazz. But even soft scuffs are okay. It's the heavier ones, and the more you do that, the more sleeve scuffs you get, the more you're going to hear it. So it's important to make sure you have a clean record before you do that. Uh, basically, I just cover the label with something. I don't care what you cover it with, or just or just be careful when you rub it, and or when you run water over it, and you should be good to go. So I already did this record, and I'm running late on this video because I was one of the reasons this is the stupidest possible way to clean a record is, say you want to hear this record and you're going to clean it with wood glue. Well, guess what? You're not going to hear it till at least tomorrow. I put wood glue on this last night, thinking that since it's 105 in the desert and I leave my shop at 85 degrees at night. It should be totally dry when you get here. I get here in the morning and 12, 14 hours later, it's still not dry. So I put it in the back seat of my car, which again, it's 100, or back seat of my truck. Again, it's 105 here today. And it's still not completely dry. You can see that the, it, it, it hasn't, hasn't um, dried completely or uh, what's the word I'm looking for? 
hasn't sealed completely. So we'll see, this may not even pull off properly. Um, and if you think, if you thought it was scary that I said I left my record in the car at 105 degrees, watch my other video where I talk about heat damage and how it doesn't actually affect them. You can leave your records outside in 120 and it's fine. If I leave them outside in my garage and it's 120 and they're totally fine. So let's see if I can pull it. So one tip I will tell you is if you're going to do this, make sure you put this the record on something and you put glue on the outside of it so it gives you a tab to pull and I'm hoping this works. I don't know if it will because if you don't, then you have to figure out a way to, to get underneath this glue to peel it off. And that usually means a knife or something. So you're automatically going to scratch your record, try to do that. So let's see if this actually, if this trick works. And now in doing this, I'm going to have my fingers all right. Before I do this, I'm going to clean this side of it so we can play test it with my Windex, the champion. If you don't like the way I clean this record, watch my other video. I'll explain how it works. All right, let's try this. Oh, it's gonna come off. Ta-da! So the only cool thing about doing this is that if you do the entire record, not just half of it, and if you do like three or four or five layers of this glue and you get a hardened product after the fact and you don't stretch it when you pull it off like I did, you could actually play this as a record and it plays that record backwards uh, because it's uh, the reverse copy of it, which is kind of cool. I would not recommend it on a good turntable or a needle that you like um, because it's going to destroy, it's going to do damage to everything that it touches. But it's kind of cool if you've got a Crosley or, or a lower end turntable or something that you don't mind beating up with. Or an old, if you just have an old needle, you know, if you just bought a new needle and you want to try this beforehand, it's, it's kind of cool because it plays the record backwards. You can see if Led Zeppelin's actually giving you satanic messages. Okay, so here it is. Here's the other problem. So if you look right here and over here, it doesn't come off clean. So, and the line is there's a line of glue right here as well and line here where I pulled it. And I understand that if I'd have done the whole ring, it probably wouldn't be as much, but anybody that's ever done this will tell you there's always, there's always some spots that aren't, aren't coming off clean. So let's give it the obligatory play test. I already know it works. So I'm not worried about it. I'm trying to figure out where to hit this, where I don't hit those glue spots. Yeah, it works. Uh, there's, there's no doubt about it. it. It totally works, but it's, it's stupid. And I'll have to, if I ever wanted to play this record again, I would have to go in and actually clean this up. I'll either have to Windex it and let this soak or do something to get all of this crap off of there. It totally works. It's, it's, it's good for cleaning records, but it doesn't beat the Windex. I mean, the, the both sides were totally clean. The Windex took me all of three seconds to do it. This took me the better part of 24 hours. So if that's how you like to clean your records and listen to them every other day or whenever, fire away. That's it. I'll try to keep this short. Thank you so much for watching. Next time around, I've got another, I've got an actual product that they sell. So uh, we'll go from there. And <laughs> As always, Spatula City Records, buy nine, get one free. They're all ultrasonically clean, so you don't have to do this garbage. And uh, free shipping on orders of $50 or more. We put new, order, new records on every week. Last week, we put 250 records that had already sold. So they're all the stuff that Billy Joel, Elton John, uh, all that stuff. Michael Jackson, all that stuff on there. So, SpatulaCityRecords.com. Thanks for watching. Later.